this is illustrating the common veins that are present in, in all individuals. And of course, there are varying you know, spots that they will be. That's why we're going to talk about how to choose your I, the best IV site to begin with. But these um, are the major veins that are in the hand and the forearm that we, uh, that we use to commonly start IVs. The three preferred veins are the median cubital, and the median cubital runs on this inner aspect of the, the forearm. The cephalic vein is the major, the larger one that runs along the thumb side, and the basilic vein runs along the pinky side. Both the cephalic and basilic begin in the hand, but then they track also up the inner forearm. When you're choosing your site, you do want to think about in terms of the best site to use. If possible, you want to use the resident's non-dominant hand or arm because they're going to be using it less. And so the less movement, the better the site's going to be protected. The other thing you want to think about is that you want your first site to be as distal as, proxim, um, as, as possible. And just to review those terms from anatomy, Distal means the furthest out from the extremity, and proximal means moving towards the body. So we try to start as far out as possible, knowing that if that one goes bad, we're going to have to keep moving proximal after that. So other things that we want to think about to avoid, um, and in our case, we're mostly working with older adults, you want to usually avoid the dorsal surface of the hand. So that means this part of the hand. Um, and the reason is that the veins are going to blow more easily in an older adult if you use that. So in older adults, we're going to try mainly to use the, the forearm area. Of course, you would avoid any site that's infected or if the the resident has any kind of compromised circulation in an area, you've got to avoid that. So this would include if you've got a resident that's got any kind of paralysis, if they had a former uh, CVA and they've got weakness on one side, um, if they've had a mastectomy, you want to avoid that side. So you've got to think in terms of what is their medical history and what is the best site to use. Um, this is a good illustration of an older adult's hand and what those veins look like. And initially you might look at this and say, oh, I can really see that vein. That looks like a good vein to use. The problem is, is that those are the ones that are going to blow more easily in an older adult. So the sclerosed or hardened veins you want to try to avoid because of that issue. So they're more fibrous. So when you, when you stick the needle in, it's more likely to go through the backside and blow the vein. Um, <clears throat> so you want to think about that. Um, of course, and to review a little of the terminology, a site that's had signs of infiltration means that there has been fluid that has um, diffused into the surrounding tissue. And so that you, you could not use that site again. Or if there's been any kind of thrombosis, that means a clot, you want to avoid that as well. So you've got to avoid those sites. Um, if you've previously used one site, you cannot move backwards from that. And if you think about how the blood flows through the veins, if you start it distal to where a previous site was bad, it's going to have to go through the bad area. So that's why you don't want to use a site distal to a previous venipuncture site. And um, then you also want to avoid where there are valves or bifurcations. And bifurcations is where it branches. And so when we think about our site, we've got to think in terms of where we put the needle in, that catheter is usually about an inch long, and so it's got to be able to thread through a straight area of the vein. You also, if possible, want to avoid the antecubital fossa area. So again, just to review, that's where they usually do blood draws. And sometimes you'll see, especially if patients or residents are admitted to an emergency room, that's often where they will start. The, the IV because it does tend to be easier to start it there. 
However, because a resident's going to continue usually to bend their arm, it's going to make it harder to infuse fluids through. And so it's better if you can at all possible avoid that area. And then we don't ever want to use, as it's illustrating in this photo, the ventral part of the wrist because we have a lot of tendons right there that can be damaged. It's also very painful. There's a lot of nerves that run through there. But so you, you want to avoid right here by the, the inside of the wrist.